Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, a uh, happy Saturday to you. Well, those of you in America who celebrated Thanksgiving these past couple of days, hopefully you had a good Thanksgiving, a good food, good drink, and good company. Those of you in America who got an extra few days off but don't celebrate Thanksgiving, hopefully you had a nice extended weekend or a nice few days off to go get a little vacation of sorts, get a little me time in. And for those of you in the rest of the world who have no affiliation to American Thanksgiving whatsoever, hope you had a great week. I think that's everyone covered. Anyways, I am also back from a couple of days off. And of course, it is Saturday, which means one thing only. Welcome to episode 45 of OSD Saturday here on the channel. Very exciting time indeed. Y'all know how much I love these weekly installments. So... Let's get into it sharpish. I've got my list on my phone. You can also see it over there as well. Episode 45. With a little bit of Japanese Le Seraphim one time. Get a little bit of Rocket Punch. I suppose Winter getting yet another OST. Um, Meloman, the Meloman duo back again for yet another week. I believe we were, they were on last week as well. They're finishing up with one more New Jeans OST as well. This is honestly. Probably one of the more star-studded lineups that we've had in OSC Saturday this year, and that's very exciting indeed. So, let's get started. Get out! Rock the intro! So let's get started sharpish. I don't know how well these are going to do on uh, content ID and stuff just because we've got a lot of different uh, companies and kind of marketing regions that are not very friendly when it comes to um, these OST rundowns and things like that. So if there is some chopping up, bear with me. I'll try and make it work as much as possible. But we're starting off with a little bit of the Fimmies one time. They have a Japanese OST, which feel like we don't really cover here all that often so that's always very exciting surfing's japanese discography is actually pretty good they don't have a lot but what whatever they do have is quite good so this is the seraphim the song dress code for the drama sexy tanaka-san um i saw this pop up and i've seen people watch it or i've seen the thumbnails for the people watching it i've been holding off on it and i almost forgot about it because it doesn't show up on my k-pop calendar because well it's not k-pop it's japanese so thankfully I found, I think it was Adri's video on it when I was scrolling through YouTube this morning. So thankfully I remembered it. So thank you, Adri. But here we go. Why is it really chill? Oh my goodness. It's like I thought it couldn't get any smoother, but it's gotten even a little bit softer. I'm waiting for a build. That's not the release I expected, but I love it. I love this, the vibes are great, but it's not too bright or too energetic, it's a very controlled brightness. Get tasty with the keys one time, hold on. It 
It's such a chill, but such a balanced song too, because it's not like slow or quiet at all. And then straight into really second time around. Like this chorus has a nice subtle amount of kick to it, and it's definitely within the parameters of what the song has already established. So it doesn't really like ever want to teeter out of its confines in a way, but I like that it's consistent. A little chair one slide into a little bit of an instrumental break. Bring it all the way back down. Happy kick. Oh, throw a key change in there, of course. Of course. Love that sustained harmony up top too. Very subtle, but oh, and end with the keys at the end too. Ooh, ooh, wait, hold on. Why does that kind of groove though? Oh, why does that kind of groove? Ooh, I am on board with this. It's, there's something about it that's inherently J-pop for me that I can't really describe why. I mean, you know, Imasi production kind of self-explanatory at this point. For those of you who don't know, just find anything that's Imasi production. It's such a nice time. It's always so controlled, so balanced. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, I don't know, there's just something about it that is just so comfortably Japanese about this. Yeah, listening to it is just easy for me. This, I mean, I'm not just all about K-pop. I listen to a whole variety of stuff. And J-pop is in there. And for me, this just would slot in perfectly in a J-pop album or like a J-pop playlist, which honestly, this is probably going to make it into the J-pop playlist at this rate. But it's just, apart from like the Japanese-ness of it, I love how balanced this is because the groove is really nice. But it's one of those where it doesn't run off on its own or it doesn't let you run off. It's not that energetic, but it's got just enough energy to get you moving, but at a nice controlled, like subtle way. Like this is definitely a toe tapper in a mode of public transport or, you know, you're waiting in line at like the grocery store or something with, you know, with like a shopping basket or like a shopping cart and you're just like tapping along the handle. This is that type of song. Very nice indeed. Righto, let's get her moving one time. Track number two for the day. Rocket Punch. I love Rocket Punch. But they have a song titled Paradise for Drama Secret Playlist. Now, brand new drama on the scene, of course, part one on an OST. And I'm trying to think if we've had a Rocket Punch OST this year or not. I mean, there's been so many OSTs that we've listened to this year that it's genuinely hard to remember who's been where. I feel like we've had a Rocket Punch OST, but I could be wrong. I might be misremembering the um the little trio uh, Rocket Punch project that we got in like the middle of the year from the uh, members that didn't partake in Queendom Puzzle. That might might be thinking of that, but yeah. Also, oh okay. We won't go with translated lyrics, that's fine. But Paradise. I wonder what if it's gonna be bright rocket punch or if it's gonna be a little bit of sappy rocket punch. Let's find out. It's bright rocket punch. Snappy launch pad part. Oh, 
there's a surprising amount of low end in this. Like that bass is rumbling low. The beat, like the kicks, very snappy but also very punchy and low. Oh no, this is interesting. Offset the low snappy beat with the really high flying vocal. It's like the vocal powers also come down too. I love how the song progresses because it's in like different phases, like really low, really high, huge amount of separation, really consistent, solid middle bit. Harmonies one time. Get your high note. And a nice bona fide little outro to finish too. There's the finish I was waiting for. Oh, I don't want to see if there's more. No, it's just the outro card. Okay. Ooh, ooh. It's bright, but it's not too quick. It's very high. It's very high. I mean, nothing that Rocket Punch can't do, but it's high, high. It's actually quite nice, because this song really takes the, um, like, like the range to the extreme. You get really high vocals, borderline whistle tone vocals, and then you get a really nice low bass throughout the song. That's very nice. Sometimes when you have that much separation between the two parts, this is a little bit worrisome, but then they fill the middle with that nice electric guitar in the chorus, and it's like, ah, everything's nice, everything's settled. Mm. I do like the progression of this song, though, because there's parts where it's low, low, and there's parts where it's high, high, and both the vocal part and the instrumental part complement each other so well in those parts where, you know, say it's like the beginning of a new verse, they take both parts really low, and then to create the biggest effect, they separate them for the chorus, and then in the builds, they like kind of put them both in the middle, so you give it like a little buffer. Let the tones m merge together a little bit, and then boom, separate them apart. Get the little, like, almost acapella vocal harmony part in the middle, and the bridge, and I thought that was really pretty, too. No complaints from me. Right, Castaway Diva is a show that we have been coming back to a lot, with good reason, because the songs are brilliant, and the artist list is immaculate. So... We continue with Miss Winter from Espa One Time. Min Jung, what do you have for us today? This is Voyage from Castaway Diva. Now, this show has had some, at least the ones we've covered so far, has had the brightness to it, but it's also had the really smooth, really mellow, really like emotional ballad type things. Winter's capable of doing both. Let's see what she's done. 
And let's hope this doesn't get content ID hit. We're going with the smoothness. Okay, it has a smoothness, but the electric guitar is kind of a nice touch. Gosh, hearing Winter singing this like low, low, low rate is like spine chilling. So cool. Putting her foot down a little bit. Nice little string glissando to start the chorus too. You know, this is a type of song that very much suits Winter's very unique vocal. Because you get like three different versions of Winter's vocal, all of them are as charming as each other. Because you get this nice low range that feels kind of intimate in a way. Building up in the power a little bit, getting into a more natural tone. Going up in range, going up in power even more. Now you're getting her little charming tone that she's known for now. She's still going. Oh my goodness. What a bridge. What a vocal bridge. I was wondering why it reminded me of that. It's the exact same chords written in, I'm pretty sure, the exact same key as Eyes Ones As We Dream. That's why that song sounded familiar in a way. What an interesting time. And this is, interestingly enough, the second OST this year that has reminded me of this. So I was listening to this and just thinking, Man, the courses sound like there's a melody that would fit in here. And of course it does, because it's the same chord sequence as Eyes Ones As We Dream, similar to... Umbi did one for um, Duna, the webtoon, before the live action one was announced. And that also had the same key and same chord sequence as Eyes Ones As We Dream. And I thought that was really cool because, you know, former Eyes One member doing a song that's 
apart from what the actual melody is, like the core elements of it, the exact same as an Eyes one song. I thought that was really cool. Oh. I love little connections like that. But the song is very good. It does showcase Winter's vocals. And I think the perfect light. And I like that even though it does come across as very much a ballad, similar to As We Dream By Eyes 1, there's a nice energetic like punch once you get into the chorus when all the instruments kind of rush in. You get like the electric guitarness of it that brings the energy, but you also get the string element of it that kind of adds a little more of that classiness, that softness to it. And I think that blend just works really well, especially for this type of song too. You're joking. Oh no, my ad blocker got nuked. Ad cut out of the way. We must move on. We are once again jumping back on board with a show we are a little bit familiar with. Good day to be a dog. I think it was Minions last week or two weeks ago. I can't remember now, but Melomance are back for, I believe, the second week in a row. What the song? Secret Between us, or at least that's what the translation is that I could find on the interwebs. Melomance is always going to be a great time. Really nice smooth vocals, really nice piano part, really nice instrumental part. It's just, there's always going to be a very well-balanced song that we're going to get. So, let's check it out one time. What an interesting instrumental choice. It's like that opening guitar almost sounded like a guitar cross with like a harpsichord or a clavichord. This one, or like a hammered dulcimer. I do like it though. It's very, um, how do I want to describe it? It's crispy. It's crispy. That's what it is. Oh, very snappy snare, too. It's like the instrumental part has a decent amount of bite to it to accommodate for Kim Min Sook's really smooth vocal. Like, mellow, rich, caramelly vocal. That's really interesting. If that is a hammered dulcimer, I don't think I've ever heard that instrument be used in K-pop before. That's nice. The fact that the riser isn't really a riser, but it's telegraphed so clearly that even though there really isn't like an explicit riser, you know it's there. Peep the harmony one time. Take it all the way down for that final re-entry. There's the final hit.
that's the one, that's the one, and that might be my favorite Melomance so OST we've checked out this year, and there's been a handful of them. I, I just, I love the sound of an obscure instrument. Or like, an instrument that you don't really think about or listen to, so I love a harpsichord, I love a hammered dulcimer. Now, admittedly, that could be just a filtered guitar. We could kind of get a this similar-ish effect to it. But like, pipe organs, iwis, hammered dulcimers, we've come across a smattering of really weird kind of obscure instruments through not just OC Center, but just checking out all of the music in general this year. I love them all because they're sounds that you normally wouldn't hear in, you know, K-pop track or even by extension an OST track just because it's a little bit weird. It's got a little bit of a different taste to it. But even if this is a hammer dulcimer or not, it gives me that vibe of it. And they're the first artist to do so within the K-pop sphere. And that has me tremendously excited. One of my teachers at my old K-8 school that I went to played Hammer Dulcimer. And it just sounds so cool. I love the sound of the instrument. And then you pair that with you know, the acoustic guitar, the snappy drum kit. And the instrumental track has a strange amount of bite to it that you normally wouldn't expect from a song of this genre, right? But then you take that, again, you throw in a little bit of strings, like you got with Winter's Voyage from one song ago. Add a little bit of mellowness to it, add a little bit of, like, almost a whispery smoothness to it, and then you throw on Kim Min Sook's vocals on top of it from Mellow Man's. His voice is so thick and so rich, and has such an interesting, charming tone to it, that it's like, that is the offset that you need, the smooth offset you need from the sharp instrumental track you get. And when you put them together, oh, ooh, it's so pretty and so lovely and it's so very, very nice indeed. Internet, behave with me here. All right. And we have one more to go. This one. Right, um, well, tech issues aside, this one has me a little bit worried because this is a Netflix show, but we're gonna move on with it anyways. If I have to cover it, I have to cover it. That's something for future me to figure out. One more song for the day. This is New Jeans. I feel like we've had a couple of New Jeans OST inclusions recently, but New Jeans and their OST directions have been really cool because New jeans, for me, have kind of established a sound that's like really chill, but really vibey sound that kind of this fifth gen, if we're calling it that, has really like cemented pro properly. New jeans as like a group have definitely established a sound signature for them, but their OSCs have been so far away from it. Like, gods from League Worlds. Unbelievable song. One of my favorite OSTs or OSTs from this year. It's because it's so far from what New Jeans is as like a group and their normal discography. And I'm kind of hoping this is the same way because this is Our Night is More Beautiful Than Your Day from I believe this is a brand new show, My Demon. Now I'm trying to think if we've had like a proper ballad y ballad from New Jeans. While I've listened to them from debut, I'm not like extremely well versed in their discography. So if this is like a ballad -y ballad, I'm looking forward to it. If it's anything else, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, it's New Jeans music. They they can get a little crazy with it, they can get a little experimental with it, but at the end of the day, the quality is gonna be top tier. So <sighs> one day I'll figure out YouTube. <laughs> I recognize that actress. Hold on. Is that who I think it is? Google, I need you to load a little bit faster, please. Bye. 
It is Kim Yu Jong. Shoot, okay. Okay, we have a little bit of the new jeans, like, kind of quirkiness of the music. So I feel like we didn't really get a release at all. I also don't know what direction the song is supposed to go yet. Like, this throws me off. Because this kind of, like, plucky bass synth part almost gives me the impression that there's supposed to be one more release somewhere, but we didn't get it the first time around. Much like with um, with Winter's song from earlier, we're getting the contrast. Really low bass, really high vocal, not a lot of middle. I still don't know where the song is going. low vocal harmony. Okay. Alright, I'm confused. <laughs> Which, I mean, for New Jeans is very on brand because they challenge my musical knowledge every release, every opportunity they get. That song, for me, did not feel like it ever had a proper, like, release or, like, a flourish. Unless that, like, dun 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 like, that is the release. In which, in that case, that's really out there. That's very experimental. But the thing is, I kind of like it. The fact that, for me at least, the song just kind of like is there and it just holds you there and doesn't really let you go is kind of weird. The thing is, that kind of uncertainty works for an OST. Because this isn't meant to be just a standalone song, it's meant to accompany what's happening on screen, right? So, to, so for this song, to have like a very specific use based on what's happening on screen and to pair that action with a very specific song choice is completely understandable. And, I mean, we get classic New Jeans vocals. It's very nice, it's very light. I think that's the main takeaway from this is that the vocals are very, very light. A little bit of airiness to it, very gentle, very high in certain parts. Still very delicate, though, very big contrast from God's. The use is very different, right? It's meant to be light and fluttery. But the fact that the instrumental part really does not explain what the song is supposed to be is very curious. Oh. Very interesting. Ooh. Honestly? That's kind of the sensation I thought I was going to get from this lineup of OC Saturday this week. But I'm very impressed by it. It's it's like, you know, you get a little bit of like the smoothness, but a little bit of the subtle energy from the Femis. You get a nice bright rocket punch. Winter showcasing the vocals. Melomance getting a little bit mellow with it. And then New Jeans getting a little bit crazy and quirky with it. It's very on brand for all of them. But in a way, it's very different from what their disco regular discography is. Well, I don't know about Melomance because I haven't listened to any other studio stuff yet. But 
it's kind of the charm of OSD Saturdays at this point. We've been doing it for 45 flipping weeks now, but, or something like that. I'm pretty sure there were a couple missing weeks here and there when I was moving in like August and September, but there's just something about the OST that allows an artist to do something a little bit different, and I like it. And honestly, a couple of these I reckon could make the um, the OST top list come the end of the year. Like I think Melomance's "Secret Between Us" might be up there just from the instrumental choice. I think that's very nice. Winter's Voyage is just a nice song to listen to. New Jeans, like that My Demon track from New Jeans is an experience. One that I'm gonna really need to let like sink in to truly understand. I might need like an actual like notepad to follow along with because that song is quite different. But that's what makes the New Jeans song a New Jeans song at this point. So thumbs up two thumbs up from me for this week as always i love ost saturday this is the reason why we keep doing these every single week although i don't know how we're going to proceed in december because december is a little bit weird for me but that's a problem for future me to figure out i'm gonna go upload this try and see if content id is going to be friendly with me or not so that is it for me today thank you all for watching along with me hopefully you enjoyed it as much as i did one last request from me today, let's work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world, whether it be checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street, just one small act of kindness to make brighten up someone else's day-to-day, -day, and know that wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in the world, ugh, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.